Rats. Do you find them creepy or cute? I find them cute, so I was excited to make a button eye rat doll, but this little one was trouble from the start. And as everything started to go wrong, it seemed like my 12 year doll making journey could come to an end. When I was planning my work for this week, I thought if I could just find some suitable eye buttons in a red or pink shade, I'd love to make an albino rat. The next day, I was in a charity shop and found these gorgeous red buttons. This whole bag costs less than a pound, so I'm taking that as a sign. An albino rat it is. I want to change the face shape a little from my usual design and give her a longer nose, so I'm making a new template for the head. I start by tracing round one side of the template I usually use for dolls this size on a piece of scrap card. Once I've got the shape I want, I cut it out, then use that piece as a guide to make a symmetrical shape. Cutting templates is a lot easier with a scalpel, but it's incredibly difficult to buy sharp tools now in the UK if you don't have a fixed address where you can sign for a parcel and provide proof of age. If you're new here, I live on a boat, so I often rely on my PO box or parcel collection points. I bought a craft knife from a local sewing shop, but sadly it's just not sharp enough, so I'll have to struggle on with scissors for a bit longer. This is all trial and error. If I don't like a shape when I sew it up, I can always make another one. I've decided on some white cotton for the base fabric and grey and white stripes for the limbs. I'm making a long ratty tail from striped cotton. This will have a pipe cleaner running through it to help hold its shape. It can be tricky turning a piece this narrow, but the ballpoint bodkin with a looped end makes it a lot easier. I just need to cut a little bit of this excess fabric away. There, that's better. I folded the pipe cleaner so it's stronger at the base and tapers towards the end. I've put a bit of tacky glue on the ends of the wires so they don't poke through the fabric. I usually use kapok fibre for stuffing. I had some issues recently with a batch of kapok. There was a lot of husk in it which was discolouring the white fabric so I've got a new batch from a different supplier and I'm hoping this will be better. I've stuffed the head and the body with the new kapok and it's not good. I think this batch is worse than the last batch I bought. It's made the white look grey. I figured I've got nothing to lose with these pieces, so I tried washing them, but that's just brought more of the brown staining to the surface. I'm gonna have to find something else I can use. So I've done some research and I found some recycled cotton stuffing that could work. Will it stuff evenly without lumps? I don't know. Can I needle felt into it? I have no idea. I can't get it delivered to my PO box, but I can pick it up from the collection point in town tomorrow afternoon. So for now, I'll have to wait. In the meantime, I decided to experiment with the damaged pieces. I've been wanting to try a button jointed neck for a while and create a movable head, so I thought I'd give that a go while I'm waiting for the cotton stuffing to arrive. I'll need to adjust the positioning a bit, but I think that could work quite well. I'm going to make a new head and body, so rather than making a hole for the neck in the back of the head, which is how I'd normally do it, I'm going to leave a gap in the seam at the top. Will it affect the shape? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So, the cotton stuffing has arrived. This is a brand called Hooked with three O's. It's made from recycled cotton fibres. It's a creamy off-white colour. They call this shade Pearl. It feels quite similar to cotton wool. It's quite squishy, but it doesn't really have much spring. I'm told it works well for soft toys, but I stiff stuff my dolls, so I'm not sure what it's going to be like to work with. I'm going to try and stuff the new head the same way I would with Kapok and see what happens. The cotton is going in quite lumpy. It's not very forgiving at all. I think working with any new material is a learning curve and you have to be prepared to adjust your technique. But I'm finding this challenging. If I can't make this work, I really don't know what I'm going to use. I've been working on this piece now for over an hour and at this point, all I can see is the flaws. Some of the small lumps can be smoothed by poking a small needle through the fabric and gently moving the stuffing. I think it's almost there. Hopefully it'll look better once I add the buttons and the shading. It's late afternoon now, I'm tired and I felt like quitting more than once today, but I'm ready to close these up and start putting them together. I'm closing the opening at the top of the head with ladder stitch. This is puckering a bit, but the hair's gonna completely cover this area, so I'm not gonna worry about that. I've be-jointed the pieces and stitched the ears in place. Now, before I do any more work on this, I wanna check if I can needle felt into the cotton. 
The 38 gauge needles won't go into the stuffing, which isn't ideal. I'm trying some 40 gauge to see if that's any easier. Those won't go into the cotton either and they feel like they might break. I can't felt into this, but I have another idea. I've cut out a piece of felt the shape of the scalp area and I'm gonna felt some Raimi fiber into it to make a wig. I'm using a block of scrap foam as a felting mat and just layering the fiber onto the felt the same way I would if I was felting directly into the doll's head. That seems to be holding really well actually. Now I've got a wig I can either sew on or glue in place. It's getting late, but before I finish for the night, I want to see if I can button joint the head to the body. This is something I didn't consider. I can't get the doll needle to go through the head. Even with the hemostats, the needle is just bending. That means I won't be able to sew the button eyes on either, as I need to stitch those right through to the back of the head. Cotton stuffing isn't going to work. Animal fibres are not an option. I'm running out of ideas, but that's a problem for tomorrow. I had to look through my stash this morning and I remember this viscose stuffing from another project. I don't have much left and I can't get any more of this as it's been discontinued by the supplier, but there should be enough to finish this doll at least. Time to make head number three. Stuffing this head with viscose took a fraction of the time it took to stuff the one with cotton. Viscose is quite springy so it's a lot easier to work with. I don't have enough left for another doll so next week will be a whole new challenge. Now for that button joint. This might not be the textbook way of button jointing head. At this point I'm winging it, but it'll be fine. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know. This also helps it get seen by more people. Okay, we've got a cute head tilt, that's not bad. I've painted some shoes in white acrylic with a pearlescent glitter finish. Now I'm going to attach the legs, then I can start creating the face. As usual, I'm shading the eye area with Derwent Colour Soft pencils to get a nice dark shadow. This will need a coat of fixative spray, so while that's drying, I'll sew the tail on. I've made her some underwear from grey cotton lace. Those are fixed in place with some tacky glue. I'm just whip stitching the tail onto the back. The bodice will overlap this and cover the base of the tail, so you won't see any of these stitches. These buttons are perfect for the eyes. I don't know how old they are, but they're in such good condition and they have a lovely vintage feel to them. I'm keeping the face quite simple. Just a few lines and a little pink and grey shading on the nose. I've picked out some grey polka dot cotton and some embroidered lace for the dress. I need to stitch the skirt in place and joint the shoulders, then I'll have to figure out what to do with the hair. Do I use the wig I already made or needle felt it directly into the head? I'm running out of time and I don't want to waste this gorgeous silky Raimi fibre so I'm going to use the wig. I could sew it, but I figured gluing it down with some super thick tacky glue would be the quickest option. I take that back, this is so fiddly. The glue's holding well though. This is one of the strongest craft glues I've found. I'll put a link to it in the description. I've given her a little string of faux pearls and named her Camille Cellarat. I think she's a perfect blend of creepy and cute. I do hope she's not the last. If you like this doll, you'll love the little fox boy I made. Go check that one out now and I'll see you next time. Bye.